I am so excited. Are you excited? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, really? Are you sure? Yeah. So we went all in for all in. But uh, in all seriousness, we totally are going all out for AEW's All Out. Isn't that right? Yes, yes, we are. Oh, man, I am excited. So we have a lot to talk about. Uh, I am your host, Brother Bob. With me is Jordan. And uh, it's been a couple weeks since we've done a show because uh, Brother Travis is having some uh, personal issues going on right now and some work issues and things. And getting him on to, uh, to shoot has been difficult. And we've had some equipment issues, so we had to order some more equipment, and Amazon has uh, managed to lose an order, um, and we had to wait for a second order to be made. So uh, we haven't we haven't had a product come out in a couple weeks. So we have a lot to catch up on, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about, what are we talking about? Our seating placements for... Um, oh, you're just jumping right in. I yeah. was going to have you say AEW, but you, you, yeah. want, you want to talk about uh, all, all Out, right? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah I do. All right, so All Out sold out, which yeah. is fantastic. They sold out quickly, um, and uh, we cannot wait until Labor Day weekend to enjoy everything that is StarCast and All Out once again. Um, but uh, I guess we should uh, share with everybody where our tickets are for that. Check these bad boys out. We totally scored. We are on the floor, first row center, section F, and, uh, man, it is going to be awesome. Awesome. Are you excited to be sitting that close? Yeah. Hopefully, I don't get anyone chucked at me like I did last time. Yo, you don't. You don't want someone thrown at you. I don't know, man. No. That that Kenny Omega and Moxley match. You might end up with uh, Kenny Omega on your lap. No. <laughs> Just like it's Jay not White. Needed. This is not needed. Yeah, yeah. If uh, anybody's new to the channel, um, Jordan here uh, had. Kazushika Okada throw Jay White at him uh, at the G1 Supercard in New York. And then in uh, Grand Rapids, when Ring of Honor came through, he had a couple of wrestlers throwing him as well. So he seems to be a, a magnet for um, hardcore wrestlers being tossed at him in matches. So it's uh, pretty entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, fighter. F- uh, yeah. All Out is going to be amazing. It sold out, and we are super excited for it. StarCast is going to be amazing. Uh, I'm excited for Sting. Are you excited for Sting? Yes, yes, I am. You are, it'll, huh? It'll be. It's going to be fun to meet him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you know, you might be surprised to know the 15 year old here uh, is a Sting mark. He, uh, Sting and Rey Mysterio are the guys he used to watch when he was real young. Uh, he, you know, steal the DVDs and watch them over and over. They're two of his favorites. And uh, so that'll be really cool. You got to meet Ray. You got to meet Ray last year, right? Yeah, at uh, the last star cast in Chicago. Yes. Uh, same location this year, too, which is cool. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll get a, we'll get already have an idea of the venue. We got our hotel room there, so uh, that'll yeah, be nice. You can get Cheesecake Factory again like the last time we Yeah, there, there is a Cheesecake Factory in the mall right across the street. That worked out really well for us. Uh, the only time we actually left the hotel to do anything was uh, to go over to Cheesecake Factory. We were so busy. But, yeah, that should be a lot of fun. But I guess we should get to the rest of the stuff uh, going on. There is a lot of AEW stuff. And I'm going to start with discussing the news that came out yesterday, which I know you haven't heard about because you don't follow uh, everybody on Twitter um, quite as heavily. I don't bother checking my Twitter or Facebook because you run those. <laughs> because I run those. Yeah, you basically post all my stuff for me. But because I have access to them for you and uh, and you don't want me seeing what you post on your Instagram. Um, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Jordan doesn't follow the wrestling news uh, the way myself and uh, and brother Travis do. So this will be his first time hearing about this huge controversy, and it'll give me an opportunity to talk about it and uh, let him weigh in in a minute. Um, WWE has announced that WWE Network will be airing the Evolve Anniversary Show directly up against Fight for the Fallen. Um, Fight for the Fallen, of course, being a charity event money proceeds going directly to help stop gun violence in Jacksonville, Florida and money going to the families who've been affected by the, uh, the Madden shootings, um, that happened there. Kenny Omega, uh, tweeted out, you know, his, um, his issues with WWE doing so, uh, making light of their taking money from Saudi Arabia in said tweet. And uh, a lot of negative feedback came from WWE fans. And I want to break some of this down because I have heard 
all of the arguments. I have heard that, well, if AEW had booked a show on top of a WWE show, all the, all the AEW fans would be cheering that. I have heard that, well, WCW back in the day had a class of champions booked on top of Mania, um, and that was meant to, you know, uh, screw over Vince's crowd for, for their show. Um, so, you know, we've heard these things, right, about um, past instances. The thing is, this is different than the past, and I'm going to break down why. First of all, and most importantly, this is a charitable event. The The way charities work and the way that doing this event with a charity works is it gets eyes on the charity. Um, people are saying, well, AEW's already made the money for ticket sales. People are still going to go. They're going to sell out. It's not going to affect how much money they make for this organization. That is 100% incorrect. Uh, yes, it's going to sell out. Yes, it's almost already sold out. Um, that money will be there. But the way a charitable organization, the most important thing of these kind of events where, where a, a large event works with a charity, uh, f- specifically from my experience working with some charities and, and actually hosting events for charities uh, and to fundraise for charities, uh, it a lot... A lot of it depends on how many eyes you can get on that charity. And this is an opportunity for them to get international eyes on this this charity, which I had not heard of up until um, you know, it was mentioned that it existed through AEW. So this was my first time hearing about it. Now, I am sure people in the UK or in Brazil or in China or Japan, it would also be their first time hearing about it because you know we're not local to that area so this the idea is to put eyes on this product because for every hundred people you might get one person who decides you know what that is a good charity I need I want to I want to take time to donate to it um, the more eyes you have the more chances of that happening and the better the charity does uh, that's working with them and this is a important charity I mean you know to stop gun violence and is to help families who have dealt with gun violence uh, in that area is super important and for WWE to book on top of it um, it's just really sleazy um, it is to take eyes off the product why I know it is to take eyes off the product and not to uh, give a platform to something new, like I keep hearing people saying online, is because the main event is an NXT championship match between Adam Cole, Bebe, and uh, Kazawa. It, it, it's two guys who aren't part of Evolve. They're two guys who are, uh, one's in NXT and one's on 205 Live. They're part of the WWE roster. They're bringing NXT stars down there and highlighting those NXT stars rather than highlighting these Evolve stars. The other thing that needs to be brought up with this is that Linda McMahon was the small business administrator head under the Trump uh, presidency. So this is this is somebody, this is the wife of the owner of this WWE company, who is supposed to be in charge of helping small businesses and startups. And here we see the WWE as a large corporation actually starting to stifle the growth of a new business in AEW. That, that, that is a conflict of interest. That's a huge problem. I know she has stepped down since then. But still, I mean, somebody who has served in that role should know better than to try to stifle the growth of a new company. Uh, the, the third aspect of it, which is really important, is that um, Evolve, th- this could have been put on... Uh, either recorded and then put on the network the next day after doing commentary uh, after the fact. Uh, That would actually save WWE money. Uh, It would have been cheaper for them to do that. Uh, They could have uh, done another Evolve event instead of this one and, and, you know, have done this in the past. They've had plenty of opportunity. The fact that they're doing it directly up against AEW It means it is calculated. It means they said, okay, AEW's got something. We're going to put something up against it. And the fact is, this isn't the first time because we know they have that show in the UK going up against both New Japan and All Out. 
which they decided to do, knowing both of those existed, is a calculated move on the part of WWE. So everybody making excuses for the WWE, saying, oh, well, it's just business, or it's just about making money. No, it's about stifling the opportunities of the competition. It's about limiting the competition success so they don't have any competition, just like it has always been. WWE went out of their way to put WCW and ECW out of business. WWE did everything they could to downplay TNA, sign up all of their talent. As soon as Ring of Honor started getting hot, they went and signed up all of Ring of Honor's talent. They they started trying to poach talent from New Japan. WWE that is what they do. WWE is built on the practice of taking talent from other successful companies and then putting those companies out of business. That is what WWE is based on. Anybody arguing anything else about the ethics of WWE need to realize that's what the company is based on. And that's where we are. We are at a point where this company is going to put up competition to a show which is meant for charity for people who suffered from gun violence. There is no excuse for that. You can pretend there is. You can make all the excuses that you you think are relevant. Nobody cares. The the fact is this is taking eyes off of a charity that is trying to help people. And, um, you know, it's it's, it's just uncalled for. Um, I know. Why don't you share your thoughts? I would like to hear what you have to say about this. I don't know if I should say this like... No cursing on the show. Then I shouldn't say it. No cursing in general. <laughs> uh, I, can't, I can't say what I was going to say. I was going to say something very me. Yeah, well, I well, I mean, I mean, do you think? I mean, based it's on the not okay. Say, it, it's never okay. Even I have never hosted a charity event, but you should never do stuff like that. There is no reason for it. It's absolutely unnecessary. All the people are making excuses are basically just trying to get people attention because they feel like they need to get attention on WWE instead of that sh- other show because WWE support superiority. Well, or whatever. I actually, I actually think the people are. I think it is the, the fans of WWE are legitimately and um, rightfully scared and upset. Uh, we got numbers in from WWE's recent shows. And, uh, I mean, we're not going to talk a whole lot about WWE in this show. This is probably going to be the last of it here in a second. But uh, uh, we haven't talked about this either yet. Mon- uh, stomping, ground, stomping Ground on Sunday. Monday night, uh, Monday night Raw. And Tuesday Night on SmackDown. The combined audience for those three shows was in the same range, right in that 11,000 range that all in did for their one show. WWE did three shows, three nights in a row, and combined audience attendance was right around that, that um, AEW or, or, or the elite or whoever you want to say did it, did for all in. That That's a huge drop. The, 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 Stadium, the arenas they were in had were half full. They had half attendance. Um, I mean, it's it's a it's a scary situation for a WWE fan. Um, hopefully, they write things like we don't want to see WWE do bad. We want to see all the wrestling do good. I want to be able to watch wrestling as often as possible. And as a fan of AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura and. Um, Becky Lynch and, uh, you know, uh, a fan of the guys over on NXT. I want to see that company do well. Um, I don't want to see them do well uh, at the expense of another company. And more importantly, I don't want to see them do well at expense of a charity that is supposed to be helping people. And that that's where we're at on this. And um, there, there's nothing you can say that takes away from the fact that WWE putting another show on for free, directly up against uh, fighter fa- uh, Fight for the Fallen, will take eyes off of that product and take eyes off of that charity. There's nothing you can say that changes that. Um, it, it's just the fact of the matter. And uh, that that's going to cost that charity uh, charitable donations from people that normally wouldn't see them. So that's pretty much all I got to say about that. There's all kind of WWE stuff, a lot of negativity going on right now. We want to try to stay positive. We want to talk about what's coming up because we got fighter fest this weekend and that show should be awesome. So, um, what do you say? You want to, you want to go over and start talking fighter fest? Yeah, sure. 
I think get off the topic of WWE. <laughs> All right. So the fir- first match we're going to talk about is the most recent match booked. Um, and I mean, I don't think it's been confirmed by AEW yet, but it does sound like we are going to see um, Kylie Ray up against the librarian Leva Bates in the pre-show for Fighter Fest. I'm really excited about this one. I am a huge Leva Bates fan, and um, I'm really like Smiley Kylie. Uh, what do you think of this one? I don't really know. You don't know? I mean, we met Leva. Leva was cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, she was really cool. We met her at uh, StarCast. Hopefully, I'll get to meet Kylie. Kylie seems uh, like a really cool person, and uh, that would be really fun um, this year. But I don't know. I think it'd be a good match. I think it's nice to have another women's match on the card. And mm-hmm. personally, I just uh, I think it'd be a good way to start the show out. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to give me more than that, kid. Uh Maybe this one. Uh, we got a, a triple threat tag team match between Private Party, SCU, and the Best Friends. The winners get a bye in the tag team tournament to crown the first ever tag team champions that will take place as part of their TV come this October. Hmm. I mean, who who do you got in this one? What what team do you like the best? SCU. SCU. SCU later. Yes, uh, I mean SCU is a fantastic team. Um, yeah, I love uh, love Kazarian and Scorpio Sky. Those guys, uh, man, they got themselves over in such a way in the last year. Uh, it's really impressive. Um, don't know a whole lot about Private Party, but uh, those guys seem like uh, they could be an interesting team to watch. And uh, best friends, I mean, they've been around forever. Um, you know. Uh, I think uh, those two guys are really good chemistry. And I think this could be a fun match. And I'm looking forward to more tag teams and a big tag team division. Because that's something we don't get to see elsewhere, like WWE. Right? I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's unfortunate. I mean, I'd like to see more tag when, team wrestling When was everywhere. the last time I've ever like seen a tag team match? On WWE? Like, yeah. You don't, you don't watch a lot of WWE. I mean, not I mean, anymore. Like the last time I have ever seen, like, I mean, it's the Usos and uh, Revival over there. I mean, those guys are good. Yeah. But uh, I mean, the rest of the division is kind of lackluster. I mean, New Day is still there, right? I mean, New, you like New, New Day, Day is probably one is like one of the most liked tag mm-hmm. teams there. Yeah. Out of all of them, at yep. all. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we want more tag team wrestling, regardless of what company you are. We want more. We love uh, God. We love the Bucks. We, you know, we love SU. We like the Revival. I mean, the, you know, we're fans of tag team wrestling. So the more of that you're going to give us, the happier I am. Um, I also hope SCU is going to win this one. That's kind of who my pick is for the match. Yeah. Okay. And we got a women's triple threat match, and. Uh, this should be pretty good. I mean, we haven't got to see a lot of the three ladies. Um, Nyla Rose obviously had that uh, high-profile match, um, but yeah, no, this should uh, this should be a good one. I have no idea who will win, just because of the fact that uh, I don't really know enough about uh, any of them, and it's one of those things where I'm looking forward to seeing more of what the three ladies uh, can you know produce in the ring. Um, I think that. Uh, there's an opportunity for a lot of people who haven't really uh, watched a lot of independent wrestling um, to get a chance to be introduced to these women. And uh, I don't know. Um, I'm going to guess Nyla Rose will probably go over in this uh, just because she didn't win at uh, at Double or Nothing. Um, and they have made a pretty big deal about her. And so I see her going over in uh, this triple threat match. It would make sense. Yeah, Absolutely. All right, we're going to move right along. Christopher Daniels versus Chima. And, uh, man, these guys apparently have quite a history uh, of having wrestled overseas. Um, Chima, of course, was uh, with the Stronghearts uh, when they faced SCU at Double or Nothing. Uh, SCU picked up the win. Uh, This should be a good match. I'm looking forward to see, you know, what Chima can do on his own. Like, I mean, I know the name. I've heard amazing things. I have not seen much of him. Um, Christopher Daniels, though, we've seen a lot of. Yes, yes, we have. We have seen a ton of him. Yep. I mean, going to ROH shows, going to uh, New Japan shows, New Japan shows, going to um, All In last year. I mean, all all those, you know, Christopher Daniels on the card. 
uh, and a big name uh, on that card. So, um, see a lot of him. Looking forward to seeing what Chima can bring. Um, I think Chima might get an upset here, personally. Uh, I don't know. What do you, What do you think? Who do you think is going to win? I wouldn't be able to tell. You I don't. don't you don't want to just go out on a limb and guess? No. No. You're not going to go with Christopher Daniels? I'm not going to go on a limb and guess. <laughs> well, I I think I think Chima might pick up a, a victory here. Um, like I said, they, he did lose at double or nothing. Um, they kind of want to establish him if they're going to use him going into TV, so it makes sense for him to win. And uh, I think it'll be just a fantastic match, regardless of uh, who goes over. You agree? Disagree? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you guess. <laughs> That's super not helpful. Um, all right. So beyond that, our next match is Michael Nakazawa versus Al- Alex Janelli, who was injured last year when we went into uh, CEO and he was supposed to fight Nakazawa. And uh, so now we get this match this year. It's going to be a hardcore match. Uh, so weapons and things. Um, I mean, I, I, I would assume it's going to be really fun. Uh, I, I could see Matt Jackson getting involved because, uh, you know, the Michael Nakazawa match. Nakazawa. Yeah. Um, so, no, like, uh, it should be fun. I don't expect it to be a five-star barn burner. Um, I, I just, you know, Janela B isn't, you know, a um, – big name pro wrestler or anything so uh i expect it to be pretty a pretty simple match but uh it should be fun nonetheless we should have some like crazy like weapon stuff go on in this one and you like you like crazy weapon stuff yeah it's fun watching people beat each other up get stapled in their head (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, yeah that stapled to his head that one time that was fun well speak speaking of staples we have oh, a fatal no. four-way match between Hangman Page, because he's a horse, uh, Jungle Boy, Jimmy Havoc and his staple gun, and MJF. And, uh, yeah, Jimmy Havoc might be staple in MJF. MJF's got himself in a bad situation fighting these four guys, or these three guys in a, in a four-way match. Um, yeah, I mean, I expect Hangman to go over here. Uh, I mean... Unless maybe MJF does something, you know, sneaky to get the win, but yeah. I don't know. He I, is a weasel. He he very much is. He is the epitome of uh of chick of chicken shit heel. And um, yeah, no, I mean, I expect one of those guys to go over. Uh, I could also, I mean, I could see Havoc going over too. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been around long enough, um, and he got a big enough name, but uh. Uh, Hangman going into um, All Out, uh, that title match, you know, picking up steam. Uh, seems like it would make sense for him to go over in this one. Yep. All right. Well, we're moving on quick here on to the next match. It's Cody Rhodes versus Darby Allen. And I don't know hardly anything about Darby. I've watched some clips. He seems extremely athletic. He's got a cool look. Um I I'm excited to see. Yeah, I, I I'm seen any clips at all either. I'm just excited to see what the guy has. And going up against Cody, who is a extremely sound in ring worker, um, you know he should put on. I mean, Cody can have a good match with uh, you know a solid match with just about anybody on that roster. And uh, so I mean, I expect this to be a, a good, strong match and a good, strong uh, appearance for uh, for Darby. Uh, I'm looking forward to see what he brings and um, you know what you know, what his character has uh, going forward. Yeah, that that's going to be fun to see a new wrestler. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, we've, you know, having watched a lot of New Japan, like they, they regularly are introducing some new people, um, you know, to their junior division and stuff. And, uh, man, I'm always excited to, to come across something new, you know. Yeah. See see what somebody else can bring to the, the table. Um, I expect Cody to win. I mean, I don't know. I mean, after, after he just beat, uh, his brother, um, and going into that tag match that they have against the Bucks at uh, Fight for the Fallen. Um, yep. Yeah, I just expect Cody to win this one. You agree? Yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> you guess. All right. And now this one, we just got some information on this recently too. Moxley Janela is now unsanctioned. Anything goes match. Oh, that's that's. 
bad. Yeah, it, <laughs> that's bad. You're, you're you're lucky you're not going to be at this show because somebody might land on you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm more expecting him just to come out with him. Who? Up- Which one? Moxley with like just a bat wrapped in barbed wire like he has done so many times before. I wanted to come out with a, a Lucille. Man, like, uh, so we were there to watch Janela and Kangman in that hardcore match at All In. Uh-huh. And uh, who, they, he took that bump off the ladder. and Cra- a Cracker ooh, barrel barrel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that match was really, really good. Um, we know Moxley can brawl. And, uh, man, these two guys, unsanctioned. Um, that this gonna be a slobber docker. It's gonna be a Donnie Brook man. This is this is the stuff Moxley's good at. Yeah, I mean he's good at just beating people to death. Exactly, and I mean uh, he he was in the you know death match style matches for years before going to WWE, and uh, I mean Janela. I mean like I said, we've seen him. We've seen him up close and personal. You know, going through uh, going through tables and Cracker Barrels. So. Um, you know, I expect this to be a really, really good, really, you know, just devastating match. I expect maybe some blood out of this one. Um, you know, we got uh, we're gonna have a good show here, uh, with these two guys. Yep, yeah, we are. Yep, and I mean, if you couldn't tell, Moxley fan and all. So yeah, I mean, I'm excited for it. And uh, and then uh, what I expect to be the main event, uh, six man tag match, uh, the Bucks, Kenny Omega, the Elite. Uh, going up against um, the Lucha Brothers and Laredo Kid, their special like third person. Um, originally, it was going to be Pac, um, but obviously uh, Pac can't, you know, due to whatever's going on with them currently, uh, can't be there. So they had to find a replacement. I think this is a good one. Um, another masked wrestler from Mexico. That makes um, sense. Yeah, wow. I mean, I think I think that they look like a good team together i think the match will be really good um yeah i mean and i haven't seen a whole lot of him i did want i did check out a bunch of uh clips. a bunch of clips online went to youtube and did some and he, i mean dude can do can work man and he can fly and i'm like all right i'm i'm interested i want to see i want to see what these guys can bring this should be a super super exciting match yep i mean what what of these matches are you most excited for then i guess is the next question mm. Moxley versus um, what, Joey, Joey, Joey Moxley. Yeah, yeah. Because I know they're gonna beat the hell out of each other. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for that too. I think that uh that six man tag in the main event. I think that is gonna be um just amazing. Uh, and I think it's gonna mean a lot to Kenny. I mean, Kenny, uh, this fighter fest is something Kenny's put together. He he worked with CEO last year and brought in a bunch of New Japan stars. Um, so this is kind of Kenny's baby. So I think he's gonna have a lot of fun in that match, and uh, he's gonna really enjoy it. And uh, you know, we're looking forward to to seeing you know you know to enjoying watching um, supporting Kenny Omega, um, somebody who's given us just a ton of really really good wrestling uh, in the past few years. And uh, I don't know. That's uh that's kind of my take on that match. It's just uh it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be a lot of a lot of action. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So, um, beyond that, man, we got uh we got to talk about a little bit um after this, obviously, uh, fight for the fallen, um that comes out here in July, mm-hmm. and then coming up in end of August, Labor Day weekend, we'll be at All Out. So yeah, in Chicago. In Chicago, and that should be fantastic. Anybody? Any other? Uh, podcasters youtubers um you know internet personalities who want to shoot something with us uh hit us up uh smartdownradio at gmail.com smartdownradio on twitter we're looking to to maybe shoot some stuff that weekend we're looking to do some collaborations um i think we're going to bring at very least the camera and the green screen and uh try to set some stuff up in the in the hotel room so we can do some shoots you know after hours if anybody wants to come back hang out have a have a beer or whatever and and talk our you know your day or talk about a specific subject i mean we can definitely work that out uh we have some other stuff some other podcasts in the chicago area we're hoping to work with and have an announcement on soon so it should be a fun weekend um everything from you know the the pay-per-view itself uh to getting a chance to try, try to meet sting i cannot wait till those tickets go on sale um i'm excited to see who else they're gonna announce is gonna to be there um i mean obviously mcfoley's gonna be there I, i've met him he is uh an awesome person 
Um, you know, Tony Schiavone is going to be there. Uh, Dean Malenko is going to be there. I mean, they got they got a good lineup started. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hear who else is going to be there and what else we can uh, look forward to. Yep. Yeah, there is somebody you want to see. Is there, is there a wrestler you hope they would book? I mean, obviously, uh, it can't be a WWE guy. So no Taker, probably no Shawn Michaels, just because, you know, that, that's, I don't know. that's how they're, you know, WWE is doing things now. They're pulling the wrestlers from those kind of things. Is there anybody... Yeah, like Leg- uh, Legends. Jericho's podcast. He's no longer allowed to have WWE people on his podcast now. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, are there anybody who's, you know, not a WWE guy who you'd like to see them try to get? Like no. uh, or a former a former wrestler who's retired or something. No? No, not really. No one. No one comes to mind. No. Not not even CM Punk. I already met him multiple times. Yeah, but still, CM Punk would be cool. We're we're hoping I'm hoping CM Punk will actually be, you know, at at all out. I mean uh, it it's it's really I would think doubtful, but man, it would be cool. It would be really cool. Um, hopefully, Cole Cabana will be part of Starcast. I mean, I would yeah. I would expect him to be. Um, he was there last time, if yep. I remember correctly. Yeah, and he was there in uh, Dallas too. So I mean, yep. the last two Starcasts. So it'd be cool to see him again. But I think that covers everything we need to talk about. We just wanted to do a quick, dirty episode, just get through it, um, you know, talk Fighter Fest. And, uh, you know, we're going to try to get back onto somewhat normal schedule. Uh, we got to talk about New Japan coming up next week because uh, we're leading into the G1 now. Um, obviously, oh, yeah. there's a bunch of friggin' WWE stuff to talk about, everything from Seth Rollins and Will Ospreay <laughs> and talking about their attendance and all that stuff, which, I mean, it's just such a downer to talk about. It's why we haven't, one of the reasons we haven't been doing it. We just... Um, trying not to get depressed by the WWE content um, that we've been out there. But anyway, thank you for joining us for this show. Uh, be sure to keep uh, keep on tabs of when we got new stuff coming out. You can do so by uh, liking this video, subscribing, and super kicking that bell button to get all the uh, announcements about when we have new content up. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and obviously here on YouTube, all at Smartdown Radio. We also have a Twitch stream. Uh, we try to run Mondays and Thursdays at noon Eastern, uh, where we do WWE 2K19 Universe Mode. Uh, if you want to join us for that, that'd be awesome. We also post those videos uh, together in one-week segments uh, here on the YouTube channel, so you can stay caught up on demand. And uh, anyway, I've been Brother Bob. This is Jordan. Thanks for joining us. And uh, sh- should I should I too sweet the button? Yes, yes, you should. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna too sweet that button. <laughs>